Hi everybody, it's meteorologist Joe Chaffee on this Thursday. Uh, I'm going to spend this first video uh, on the long range mostly. Um, I want to update uh, the situation with regards to the nor'easter for uh, Sunday night into Monday night for areas uh, from uh, North Carolina on up into New England and then we'll move on to the long range which I think is pretty dynamic. So let's take a look. Um, this is the European model um, with regards to this next weather system. So this is the current time. And what I'm showing you here, by the way, is the surface position of the low and the winds at the 850 millibar level, which is at about 5,000 feet. Um, there's a limited amount of resources I can show you with the European, but and also there are 24 hour gaps in between. But right here, we have a very intense surface storm uh, in uh, along the, the uh, Georgia North South Carolina border uh, the pressure on it is 983 millibars so if you have a home barometer it's under 29 inches this is a very strong system and these this area here, rep, here represents the winds at that level and in the purple uh, the winds are greater than 64 knots now at the surface this doesn't translate in the same way but with the storm intensifying and wrapped up over the southern part of the Delmarva Peninsula by Monday night, those strong winds at that point are beginning to shift up into New England. So it's the period in between where we get into those strong winds starting later Sunday night and lasting into Monday evening. And by Monday evening, you have a 64 knot winds or greater at the 5,000 foot level in southern New England. So um, this is probably going to translate into winds of 30 to 40 knots and gusts of 50 or to 60 knots uh, up and down the coast from northeastern uh, from Virginia on up uh, into southern New England. I'm going to switch over to the GFS real quick and you can you can see um, that I can actually show you the surface wind on it and more of the um, uh, times in between. So when we take a look at what that model is doing, um, and also the surface low, uh, this is now starting um, Sunday morning. The low moves across northern Alabama and begins to uh, intensify uh, into eastern Tennessee and then gradually translates over to off the Virginia coast on this model. They're, all the models are about the same, and there's the, the wind field here, uh, the strongest winds uh, from the from the, on the northern side, uh, all occurring over the Delma, uh, over uh, Maryland, eastern Maryland, Delaware, southern New Jersey. This is Monday morning on up to Long Island and southern New England. And there you can see by Monday afternoon this belt. These are sustained winds in the Reds, uh, going up to about 50 knots, touching the New Jersey coast and touching the south shore of Long Island. And they are uh, they continue uh, into Monday evening before they translate further to the northeast. So this is going to be a pretty powerful system and um, we'll update you in terms of uh, how this is going to play out as soon as the new GFS model run is in. So at this point I want to switch over to the long range because the pattern change that we've been talking about and I guess everybody else has been talking about remains pretty much on course. So here we have um, the situation uh, with the upper air uh, beginning next Tuesday and let me just make sure this thing is working correctly um, it is and so here you have that upper feature you can see how uh, cut off it is the upper low is well to the south look how far south the main jet stream is uh, it is very very active in the southern stream and you got these troughs, troughs moving up in the middle big bridge uh, up into Canada all right, and this is displacing uh, the cold, the uh, jet stream southward. This is really a good example of uh, what happens when you have blocking in the atmosphere, because normally you have strong westerly winds across Canada and you don't. Uh, now you have um, high pressure, so uh, the winds are actually more this way, and they they are lighter. So you're not getting that cold flow from Canada. You have some low and mid-level cold air and some of that by the way is going to bleed down uh, into uh, upstate New York and New England with this models are colder with every run so there's probably going to be some significant snow and ice in areas well north and west of the coast but 
uh, that's again we'll update that for you later so watch what happens as we go through time and gradually you know that system lifts out but Canada continues on the road to repair as that ridge breaks down and then as we move along you get this deep trough uh, we're now into days 11 and 12 here as we go into the beginning of February deep trough uh, that runs from northern Hudson's Bay all the way down uh, into the Gulf of Mexico and look at that very strong polar flow that takes over and the questions going forward with regards to the long range is whether this is going to hold and you know it looks to me like the cold shots are going to go in and out, and they always do, but there seems to be, at least as we go toward the end of the period, a tendency for you know this complex up here to remain. So if that's the case, there should be uh, other cold air masses attempting to come down. And what we're going to be looking for as we move through uh, the forecast period is whether we can get any kind of southern system systems in the southern uh, part of that jet to start um, moving along um, and affecting um, the United States in terms of wintertime weather. So uh, we're going to now take a look at what this translates to at the surface. And always remember that as we go deeper and deeper into time, uh, the reliability becomes less and less and not to focus on the specifics after the sixth or seventh day. Um, you can start to view it in a more general sense. Here's that uh, nor the uh, seeds for the nor'easter, snows in the Rockies. You still don't have a lot of cold air in the U.S., but here's the big high at the surface that's building up in Labrador. One of the things that the model, the GFS was not, was not correct in, in, in that it was moving that high out um, too quickly. Uh, the other models held it in, and in fact, the GFS does hold it in, and, and you can see what it does here, by the way, in terms of uh, snow and sleet across the interior sections of upstate New York and into New England. Here's the next storm that comes into the Rockies, and, and let's just backtrack a little bit. Um, there's a system coming into California, another big snow and rain producer for them. Uh, that goes into the Rockies, and you get some snows into Colorado. This becomes a nice little snowmaker for Nebraska and Kansas, and then runs up to the Great Lakes and Northeast. And here we have um, a cold front that moves on through. Um, models were trying to do something maybe later next week. Uh, the European was doing that last uh, yesterday. It didn't do it last night. Um, it just basically has uh, colder air gradually overwhelming. And remember what I said yesterday, because of the air in Canada being relatively warm, it's going to take a while for that to translate down into the surface. Now, toward month's end, one of the things that struck me here on the GFS, you can see there's a low that comes out of the Gulf and then moves off the East Coast. There's also energy that's dropping down into the Great Lakes, and I think we're going to have to watch this closely. Um, when we look at the upper air with this, uh, I'll switch it off, and you can see the upper air. There is energy that's coming down and trying to do something here. Okay, You can see it right here. Um, there's a, a, a pretty good-looking trough here that uh, begins to develop. Let me get that pen going there. Right in there, there's little waves of energy. So what the GFS does sometimes is uh, it starts to show, show something in the broad sense. And as we get closer and closer to the event, these troughs can tend to become a little deeper and a little sharper. We also have, um, you know, there's a little short wave up in here too, um, which is kind of interesting. So, you know, I'm looking at all this and, and seeing all this energy running around. Uh, I wonder whether toward the end of the month, that there might be some kind of low that's going to try and, um, you know, straddle up the eastern seaboard. That's, again, in speculative mode. When I see a, an upper air like this, it does make me rather suspicious. And when we continue the, the, the look in the upper air, again, there's that deep trough. This would be a, the shot of cold air for the very beginning of February. So you're also going to have to watch this, too, for something to happen. Um, because the trough is so deep you know there's always a possibility that something uh, could occur here you have a big ridge that builds out in the west and you know this is a huge change from the overall pattern that we were seeing uh, in the long range uh, going forward and as we move it along again the big question is whether this is going to be something that's going to hold uh, in a general sense i don't get too worked up as a 
winter weather lover and a snow lover, I wouldn't get too worked up over the fact that cold air masses, you know, tend to come in and go out. Uh, that's just the nature of, of, of it. It's a question of timing when, when the cold air is in, are you going to have some kind of um, storm development? This was the mid-cycle run. I'm just going to take it back one run here for you uh, and show you. Uh, even on the prior run, you do have, you know, the, 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 the um, specifics are a little different. It still wants to have this trough, by the way, uh, at day 10. So I think this is something we're going to have to watch. You have a big ridge out in the west, so that's always, you know, something that tells you to be cautious with regards to some kind of storm development. And then as we move through time, you still have this um, sort of vortex complex intact. So that, that, that I think is uh, something that's important uh, in the longer term. The, other, the one thing you don't want to see is uh, you don't want to see the trough get reestablished out in the west. Um, I don't know that I see any signs of that. There's this big blocking high that's building up in Alaska on this run and trying to build across the top. Um, there is going to be a lot of warming in the highest layers of the atmosphere occurring all across the poles. That usually translates into a colder, stormier pattern for uh, the United States. Um, and as we go down the road, we'll see if that continues. But from the standpoint of this um, pattern change, I can tell you right now, from the standpoint of the storminess of the pattern, that part of it's changed because of what we've been seeing and what we are going to be seeing for the rest of this week and going into next week. Um, the uh, question will be whether the cold part of the pattern sets up uh, in the um, in a bullish way with regards to um, snow, events, snow and storm events in the eastern part of the United States. So uh, we'll uh, leave it there at this point. Um, just be advised that uh, I will uh, cut another video with regards to the short term in the Nor'easter as soon as the GFS model is out far enough. And uh, in the meantime, uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already. That's free, absolutely free, and you get notified every time a new video comes up. And uh, you can download my app and subscribe to my uh, local forecast for New York, New Jersey, Long Island, Connecticut, Hudson Valley, and Eastern Pennsylvania. Uh, the link will be up here on the card that comes up on the video. You can click on that and uh, take a look. Uh, the app is free. Uh, the download, the uh, subscription is just a buck a month, and you get my forecast. You do not get icons. You get my forecast, satellite radars, maps, you know, all kinds of discussions. So um, if, if that's something that you really would like, um, just go ahead. It's there for on Androids and it's there on Apple. So have a uh, great Thursday, and we will uh, talk to you later as we look at the nor'easter that's coming for Sunday night into Tuesday of next week.